everyone, welcome to Connect. My name is Roland Waterman, and we have a special edition for you today. Uh, if you happen to be watching last week, I, I did an interview with, or actually, Deb Polk did an interview with me, but I introduced Deb Polk last week. If you, if you missed that, be sure to go to, go to either my uh, YouTube, to type my name in on YouTube, pull that up and watch last week's, because you don't want to miss what Deb Polk shared last week. But Deb is going to be one of our occasional hosts on this program. So that's what I'm doing uh, in last week and this week's uh, program is that I am introducing some new program hosts to you. And so if you've been watching the program in the last few weeks, maybe you recognize this person sitting next to me. Her name is Michelle Roll, and uh, she's from Cedar Rapids. And I've known Michelle about two years, but seems like it's been 20 years because every, every time we're together, it's a whole new experience and it's one you don't forget. So it's that kind of a thing. And it's that way with Deb too. These, these ladies that I feel God has, has had, had me uh, connect with and bring them on to be part of this program is because they are full of the Spirit of God. And they're going to bring new life and, and uh, take over kind of where I've, what I've been doing. So that's what this, this particular program today is to introduce uh, Michelle as one of our new, one, I said one of our new program hosts. So Michelle, thank, thank you. you. You were on the program. Uh, in fact, Deb Polk interviewed you. Yeah, she did. About three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Aired on the 11th. Aired on the 11th of February, right? Mm -hmm. So you were just on. Yes. But uh, I've, I've snagged her and brought her back because uh, we're starting something new here with Connect. And that is we're going to get a, a greater variety of people on this program. And I was kidding a little bit with Michelle when I said because she's young, I won't tell you how old she is, but I think she's a lot like 34. But uh, I know she's not 34, but she's, when you, when you listen to her, watch her, you're going to see that she seems like she's about 34 years old. But I, she's going to be bringing some younger people onto the program, which I'm kind of excited about because we want to reach the younger people. And, you know, actually, Michelle, if you wanted to bring um, a, a youth on sometime, mm -hmm. an interview a youth, you mm -hmm. could do that just to get a young person's perspective uh, about Christianity. And uh, because that's what we need. We need to put some variety into this. So uh, I'm going to let or have Michelle tell you a little bit about herself, and then she's going to conduct an interview with me. And this is, this is her first time to do that. So you might say it's her practice run. So Michelle, yes. first tell them a little bit about who you are. Okay, so my name is Michelle Roll, and I reside in the Cedar Rapids area. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I were brought to Cedar Rapids in 2007. And we had this experience of coming from Arizona and traveling through the states and ending up in Wisconsin, where he, he is from mm -hmm. and his parents reside. And we stopped in Viaggi's down there on Collins. And I said to him, this, this feels like home. Oh, wow. And he felt it too. And so then he had graduated from school and um, he had been in a job, but we were about to start our family or we had started our family mm -hmm. and we wanted to get out of Phoenix and something wow. opened up and we moved. And then um, I didn't realize, but I have heritage in Cedar Rapids area and mm -hmm. actually my mother's parents, they met at Co. Oh, wow. Her mother was from Chicago and they um, sent her to Co College and her dad was there and they were some of the checks that had come over and they oh, wow. worked in Sinclair. Mm -hmm. So it was really neat that I have roots and that the I feel like this is home became a full revelation of yes, wow. heritage is here. And so uh, he just really put a heart for the city on yes. me and it's a generational thing. And so... Did you ever wish you were back in Phoenix? No. This time of year now? <laughs> in the wintertime, yes. yes. <laughs> not during the hot season at all. At Do all. not miss it. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you, Michelle. And yes. um, um, as I said, Michelle, has, uh, she has a variety of giftings. We're going to talk about giftings today, as a matter of fact. 
about the fact that every one of us, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, that we have all received a special grace. And Michelle, share with them what that special grace is that God has given you and how you use that to express kingdom realities. Okay. So I wanted to tell you, I feel like hard hats would have been great for this interview because oh, really? we are both in this building phase. Building phase. We're going to be builders and we're yes. starting to construct that. So I have a heart for the arts and mm -hmm. the expressions of um, the prophetic arts, which Deb and I had talked about, that mm -hmm. it's things that come through God, through promptings of the Holy Spirit, and yeah. then it's initiated through dance, through song, through painting, through poetry, through, through all those things that we see that are out in the culture, mm -hmm. um, but they're brought into the holiness of God and they're done through His lens, which is life-giving. And then it also helps people discover who their identity is. Mm -hmm. And then the passion of uh, embrace the fivefold, live as one. So that is, can, I mean, what you've been set out to do mm -hmm. Is, is you feel a calling to a, an equipping and yes. creating a school which is founded uh, around a scripture. Can yes. you tell us about the scripture that you're facing? I that would, on? I would. And I, I want to go back and ask you one question, Michelle. Okay. Uh, you said that the Holy Spirit inspires what you paint. Yes. Do you see an image or a picture? Or how does He inspire you to? When you begin to paint, you don't always know what you're going to paint, right? You just get up to the drawing board and. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it comes by seeing something that inspires yes. me. Sometimes it comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it comes by just the environment of the room, and then something comes spontaneously. Yep. Uh, so, like, like the one that we did last time, it was inspired by a word of God telling me about the hill of the Lord and Him removing obstacles, and that's how that painting came about. Mm -hmm. But other times it's been like in a prayer meeting and someone was talking about what they saw and all of a sudden I just got a vision. Yep. And I went up and did it with the chalk uh, drawing and created wow. this bowl pouring out, golden bowl pouring out over the cornfield. Um, and so there really is no pattern in it. It's just this, I trust him enough of how he speaks to me to know that it is good right. and that he will take that treasure and he'll pass it to someone yes. and they will receive of it yep. and um, that just excites me enough to say yes. Say yes. <laughs> you know speaking of saying yes I said to Michelle here on the phone recently I said Michelle you know because see I'm an evangelist I am a pastor but I my heart has always been because and the reason it's been on re reaching lost people is because I was a lost person once and I know what that feels like. I, I know what it feels like to be lost and not know Christ. And knowing Christ and coming into a relationship with Him is like a whole new world, a whole new realm of reality. Mm -hmm. And I not only that, but I became a, a whole new person. But I believe that God wants to use uh, I think I can safely say this, most everyone's gift, you have giftings. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ and, and you're a born again believer and the Spirit of God's living in you, even if you haven't been born again yet but you believe, there's a day coming for you when you are going to experience the wonderfulness, the, the overwhelming goodness and the incredible love of God and when it happens for you, uh, that reality is going to come and live on the inside of you and it'll never leave you. But I believe this, that we were born with giftings. Mm -hmm. I believe that we were born with natural abilities, but when you are born again and become a child of God, God gifts you with spiritual, spiritual giftings. And it, uh, it's called grace gifts or gifts of grace. And you know, you, you may not be an artist like Michelle, but, but you have some unique things about you and God wants to use your uniqueness as a means to communicate to other people who Jesus is. And so it, it looks different for all of us. Mm -hmm. It really looks different for every one of us. And, uh, but anyway, so I, had, I said to, to uh, Michelle, Michelle, you know what I see you doing? 
this, this gift that God's given you of prophetic art, prophetic means that the, what she paints is revealed to her through the, through the Holy Spirit. But, but God's going to use that prophetic gift in the marketplace to draw people around you so that you can tell them about Jesus. And I really think that if that isn't happening for you, it's going to. Oh, yes, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come down and see what happens but, make sure it does. <laughs> but let's, let's talk about your, your scripture. My your, scripture. Your, oh, that's your, right. Your Luke We're 10 minutes. 18. You know, I, I, I feel this, that most people have a bit of shyness to them. And the only way you can overcome, people say, well, I, I'm not an evangelist. I can't do that. That's not me. That's not me. Well, you know what? I want to tell you a true story that happened about 24 years ago, 26 years ago. We were having this evangelist come from Johannesburg, South Africa, and we decided we were going to go out ahead of time, door to door, and put flyers out and invite people. So I had a Wednesday night class, and I told them what we were going to do and how we were going to do this, going out door to door. And one of the ladies in our church, uh, she was all excited about it. But come Thursday night, because we were going to go out on Friday, come Thursday night, she had a literally a panic attack and had to go to the emergency room in Independence out of fear of going out and talking to people door to door. She had a panic attack and they had to give her something to calm her down. But she showed up the next day. I said, all right, her name is Shirley. I said, Shirley, I'm going to have you go with me, okay? You don't have to do anything. Just let me do the talking. So we went to door number one. I did the talking. Went to door number two. I did the talking. We go to door number three, and now she is starting to talk. After that third door, I couldn't stop her. She took off. And she was doing the talking. She was knocking on doors. She overcame her fear of talking to people about the Lord just by doing it. And you can too. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to go door to door to do this. There, are, there is one gospel, but there is a thousand different ways to present the gospel or to present the person of Jesus Christ. I want you to, if you have your Bible, go to Luke Chapter 4 with me, verse 18. And it's Jesus stands up in the synagogue and he says this. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he is a, has appointed me to preach good news, good news to the poor in spirit. Can you think of any people right now that are really going through a hard time? They've had a hard life. They're going through hard things, and they, really, and they really need to hear some good news. In fact, these days that we're living in, you don't hear hardly any good news. But we have good news to share with people, and that is that God loves them. Amen? That God's got a plan for their life, that all His plans for them are for good and to give them a future and a hope. And so we have good news to share. We, we have good news to share with the, with the person that's strung out on drugs and alcohol is that you don't have to be addicted anymore. Jesus came to set captives free. Amen. So I'm going to read this to you. It says, For he's appointed me to preach good news to the captives, or release of the captives. You know what people, I know people right now, I know Christians, Christians that are still bound, inwardly bound with guilt and shame from the mistakes of their past. I want to tell you something. Jesus doesn't want you to carry that anymore. He wants to set you free. That's what he came to do. That's what he came to do. And if you're a believer, you may just be the person that God wants to use to tell somebody, you know what, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. They're remitted. They're cast into the sea. God doesn't even remember them. And he, he doesn't want you to remember them anymore either. And lay hands on them and pray for them and let that release come through the Holy Spirit and set them free from that guilt and shame. It can happen like that. And God wants to use people like you to do that. So he came to proclaim good news. He came to set at liberty those that are bound, whether it's fear, fear, phobias, anxiety, depression, guilt, shame, anger, bitterness, resentment, anything, or addiction to eating, addiction to drugs or alcohol. Jesus came to set captives free. 
Now, I'm, I've got the, I'm getting to the bottom line of this, okay? And then I'm going to turn it back to Michelle. But so, so where's Jesus at? He's not here anymore. So did, did that ministry end? Do you think that ministry ended the proclaiming of good news or the, the setting of uh, at liberty those that are bound? No. He gave that commission and the anointing of his spirit to the church, to you and I. To carry on what he came to do. So let me keep going here. This isn't all. There, this is the fivefold ministry, I call it, for every believer. And who it are is, the fivefold? We are the fivefold. But who's in? Who are the offices of the fivefold? Well, the offices, there are offices of fivefold, which is the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Those are offices. Your pastor holds an office of pastor. But every believer is a minister. Yes. And every one of you watching this right now is part of this. This is another five-fold ministry, okay? You, God has called you to be a part of this in your realm or sphere of influence, whether it's your workplace or your neighborhood or your family, your community, whatever, that God wants to use you to communicate His good news, to communicate His message of love, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to give recovery of sight to the spiritually blind. You know that the reason people, the people, the Bible says that the little G God of this world system has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And so when we come and present truth to them, their spiritual eyes are open. Right, Michelle? Yes. And I've got two more things. I'm going to turn it back to you. Okay. The, the, the fourth thing that Jesus came to do was to heal broken hearts and to restore downtrodden. There's so many broken-hearted people. They've been through divorce. They've lost a loved one. Their children, though they've raised them right, they've gone off into the world and they're doing crazy things and the parents are broken. There's so many broken-hearted people out there that need to be healed and restored. That's our ministry, Michelle. Okay. So, Pastor, mm -hmm. your passion that you've been sharing yep. with me is that you want to build this equipping school. Yes. Because you and Dottie are equippers yes, and are. you champion people. So, yep. I like that word, champion people. Yes, you champion people and you do it well. So, the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So, if I can give some testimony of what I've seen of how you already are equipping, and this is your bigger vision. Oh, okay. And just like he did with Shirley, he equipped her for the ministry of, of evangelizing the door to door. Mm -hmm. And so I have seen you and Dottie equip those who have a calling on their life to preach and give them freedom at your pulpit. Mm -hmm. I've seen you, those who have prophecy that comes from them, you give them the space to release the word to the congregation, and then you put the word of God, the living word of God, on top of the prophecy so that it's a teaching moment that brings understanding. Mm -hmm. You have allowed um, my art to come through, and there's fruit of that. So when we're talking about an equipping school, mm -hmm. it... it um, it's, it's, it's a community that you are gathering together to take them from one place in God into another place in God so that they can widen their tent pegs. Yes. And so you're inviting them into this place. Will it be in your, will it be at your church? Will it be in a format on Facebook? What is a format that you're envisioning this? How is it tangible? Oh, you just, you did a good job of that. I, because now, now I know where I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you know what? I do uh, Facebook Live, and I want to do, uh, I'm going to do some training on Facebook Live. I've done that already. In fact, I want to tell you about a page that I have. It's called The Luke 418 Ministry Network. And see, it's a network of people. It's a network. We're going to cast the net. We're going to bring in the harvest. And and so what I, what I try to do is to help people discover their purpose in God. You know, I remember talking to a lady a little over a year ago at a laundromat in Florida, and uh, she was 72 years old, I found out. And I said to her, so she was Christian. I said, so tell me, what, what is your purpose in God? And she looked at me and she says, you know, I am 72 years old, and I don't know what my purpose is, what God's purpose is for me. 
I don't know that I'll ever know. And I think that is the saddest, saddest story that I have ever heard, is that we can live our whole life as a believer and not bear fruit because God has called us to bear fruit. He's called us to be co-laborers with him in his harvest field. And how we do that, that's where, where the school of ministry comes in. Uh, the, I call it the equipping school. We, we equip people, we help them, help them find their purpose in God. And you know, I, if, uh, by the way, I want you to go to the Luke 418 ministry network, ministry network, it's a group, okay? It's a group. And so find it and, and um, uh, send me a notification that you want to join and I will, I will let you in, okay? But you can follow me on that page, the Luke 418 Ministry Network. You can also follow me um, on my personal Facebook page, Roland Waterman, and I do a lot of teaching and whatnot on Facebook Live. And so, and then I have another one, I have another a Facebook page called Healing. No, it's not Healing the Broken Heart. Donnie, what is it? It's called, it's called um, Life Link. That's another page that I have. That page is devoted to help heal hurting broken people. And so the posts that I put on that pertain to things like depression and anxiety and loneliness and, and fear and how to overcome those things. But I want to get back to this equipping. So you're not afraid of the process. There's all those things that you told me of where you can go and all the resources. Mm -hmm. You're not fearful of the process of moving from this place to the next in mm -hmm. Jesus and what he has for people. Because nope. you know. Yep. Something I want to do, uh, Michelle, I off, I've offered to do this already on some of my Facebook Lives that I've done. But you go to my page, Fa Roland Waterman's Facebook page, you'll see a whole lot of videos that I have there that I've done in the past, but I, I will do this for any person that will message me on my Facebook page. Just send me a message and say, uh, Roland, I, I would like to discover what my purpose in God is. And I can almost guarantee you that if I get just 30 minutes to talk to you, even over the phone, mm -hmm. that I will be able to tell you what your purpose in God is. Because see, people just need, they have the desire to make him known, they just don't know how to do it. And so if you'd like to be part of this Equippers uh, School of Ministry, I want you to message me on my Facebook page or call me, I think my phone number is up there, my email address is up there and say, Roland, I'm interested, can you send me more information? And so the first thing is to find out what your unique gifting and calling is and I can help you do that. That is so exciting. Mm -hmm. And you know what's exciting, Michelle, is when you start functioning, functioning as a member of the body of Christ in your unique gifting and calling, the joy that you will have will sustain you through every hardship in your life. Because it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, yeah. and Spirit speaks to Spirit, and it mm -hmm. knows one another intimately, mm -hmm. and it feels so comforting to be functioning how God created you, because He knitted you together in your mother's womb before... You. Yes. He did. Yes. So He knew beforehand, and He cares enough that He counts the hairs on your head. That's right. And so He's intentional, and so what a gift that you can talk to someone and, yep. and help extract the truth of who God has created them to be, yep. and then help teach them to equip them to mm -hmm. go out unto those who are not saved. Yep. You know, before Dottie and I were Christians, we were in the business world, and we were in sales and sales management and, and uh, marketing, and we hired and trained salespeople and developed management uh, out of those salespeople. And uh, so we talked to some of these people, and they'd say, oh, I can't do that. And uh, But Dottie and I, I, God had given us, even before we were believers, were believers, a natural gift to spot potential in people, mm -hmm. to recognize potential in people. But, you know, all you have to do is, I believe that God began to speak to you when you were probably about seven or eight years old. God began to, you began to imagine yourself as a child doing things mm -hmm. at some point in your life, doing things. And so that's one of the questions I ask. What did you imagine yourself becoming or doing when you were a child? And, um, uh, and 
And now, even in, in your life today, what do you, or in times past, what, have you, what do you see yourself doing? What do you hear yourself saying? What burden do you carry in your heart? For what people group? Is it children? Is it people in nursing homes? Is it sick people? Is it marriages? There's so much need, human need in the world. And God has anointed you and called you to make him known through the need, meeting the need that they have in their lives. Calls you by name. Calls us by name. It's personal. Yes, indeed. So, Michelle, you got one minute. Any other questions for me? So, how quickly can, how quickly is the school being rolled out? Well, I'm, I'm starting to set that up. I want to give, give the people time to respond to this and to notify me so I can get you on an email list and start sending notifications out to you. And then I will notify you if you get on my Facebook page and send me a friend request, you will receive notifications of when I'm going on Facebook Live. But we will be doing some classroom type training the end of March okay. before Easter, before Easter. And, and I'm gonna have a Saturday. What, uh, what do they need? What kind of tools do they need to bring? Themselves. Just themselves? And a notebook. And a notebook. Yep. And their Bible? And their Bible, yes. And because we're going to do we're going to do gift analysis. We're going to lay hands on people and pray for people. And this spring and this summer, we will be doing a lot of outreach. But I will help you. I will even teach you how to do your own Facebook ministry where you can do five minute devotionals on Facebook Live and you can reach people that way. You can reach your friends. Uh, one of the things we'll be doing on that Saturday is we will, I will be spending probably two, three hours talking just about Facebook, how to reach people through, through social media and teaching you about that. All you have to have is the want and the desire. Amen. Well, Michelle, I did most of the talking. I'm sorry, but our time is, is just about up. And uh, I want to I thank you for watching. I want to thank you for being one of our regular viewers. And I want you to be watching for Michelle as she occasionally is hosting a guest uh, on this program. And you be, you be curious and excited to see who she has on. I have a feeling that the people she has on will be very interesting and that you will enjoy them. So Michelle, God Thank bless you. you. Thanks for coming on. Yes.